In the late 1600s, a wave of fear swept through a small village called Salem in Massachusetts. This fear led to one of the most famous events in American history, the Salem Witch Trials. In this video, we will learn about what caused these events, who was involved, what happened during the trials, and what happened afterward. In 1692, Salem was a small village with strict religious rules. People in Salem believed strongly in God and the devil. They were also scared of witches, who they thought could use magic to harm others. At this time, the village was dealing with diseases, wars, and other problems, making people very anxious and fearful. The trouble started in the home of Reverend Samuel Paris. His daughter, Betty Paris, and his niece, Abigail Williams, began acting very strangely. They had fits, screamed, and twisted their bodies in unusual ways. The local doctor could not find any illness, so he said they must be bewitched. This news spread quickly, and soon the whole village was scared. As the fear of witchcraft grew, more girls in Salem started showing similar strange behaviors. They accused several women of being witches. These women included Tituba, a slave from the Caribbean Sarah Good, a homeless woman, and Sarah Osborne, an elderly woman. These women were easy to blame because they were already outsiders in the community. The number of accusations quickly increased. The scared villagers began to blame more people for witchcraft. The fear spread to nearby towns and soon many people were accused of being witches. The community's deep fears and suspicions made the accusations grow out of control. The Salem Witch Trials began in June 1692. A special court was set up to judge the cases. The court believed in spectral evidence which means they accepted dreams and visions as proof that someone was a witch. This type of evidence was very hard to argue against. The trials were strange and scary. The girls who were afflicted would scream and have fits in the courtroom, saying that the accused witches were hurting them. The accused people were questioned harshly and pressured to confess. Many confessed just to save their lives and would then accuse others to avoid punishment. One of the most famous cases was Rebecca Nurse, a well-respected elderly woman. Despite her good reputation and lack of evidence, she was found guilty and executed. Her case showed how fear and superstition could overpower common sense and justice. By the end of the trials, 20 people had been executed, 19 were hanged, and one man, Giles Corey, was crushed to death with heavy stones because he refused to say whether he was guilty or not. His last words, more weight, showed his courage and the cruelty of the trials. Most of the people executed were women, but men and even animals were also accused and killed. The trials created an atmosphere of fear and mistrust, turning neighbors against each other. The accused had almost no way to defend themselves against the unfair trials. By late 1692, people began to doubt the trials. Important leaders like Increase Mather spoke out against using spectral evidence. Governor William Phipps eventually stopped the special court and declared a day for the colony to fast and pray for forgiveness. In the years that followed, many people involved in the trials admitted they were wrong and apologized. The community of Salem and all of Massachusetts had to deal with the effects of the trials. In 1702, the trials were declared unlawful. In 1711, the colony passed a law to restore the rights and names of the accused and gave money to their families. After the Salem witch trials ended, the people who were accused and their families faced hard times. Some who were in jail got out because Governor William Phipps said they should be freed. The trials caused a lot of pain and split the community of Salem apart. Families of the accused had to deal not just with being in jail, but also with the shame of being called witches. In 1711, many years after the trials, the government of Massachusetts admitted they were wrong. They made a law that said the trials were unfair. They also gave money to the families of the people who were accused and executed. This was a way to say sorry for what happened. The names and reputations of the accused people were also fixed. The government tried to make people see that those who were called witches were actually innocent. But even with these changes, the wounds from the trials didn't heal easily. Families still felt the pain and shame from being accused wrongly. As time passed, people built memorials to remember those who suffered during the trials. These memorials are reminders of the importance of fairness in protecting people's rights. Don't forget to like and subscribe.